Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, Wilderness Challenge. For those of you joining me for the first time ever, my name is Sabouts, and for those of you returning, welcome back. Now, Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead is a survival roguelike game. I know a lot of you who follow my channel are very familiar with it because I've played it a whole lot, but for those of you who are not familiar with the game and who are not familiar with my channel, I've got various uh, scenarios and challenges that I've done using this game. Uh, the game is very good for that. It's a lot of fun. And I'm always asking the community for suggestions on different scenarios and challenges I should put together. So I welcome you for joining me for this one. I highly recommend checking out the other ones. I've heard they're pretty good. Of course, I think they're great, but that's because I'm going to have bias about that. They're my series, but... Uh, the viewers seem to really enjoy them, and I know I really enjoy playing them. Now, the Wilderness Challenge is going to be a little bit different, and this one I've been very, very excited to do. It's been in the works for probably about two months now. Um, it hasn't taken me two months to make the challenge, but I, it's been on my mind, and I've been kind of piecing together different uh, scenarios and how I think I'm going to map it all out uh, for quite some time. And I know a lot of people who are extremely excited and have been waiting for this. Now, before we get started, uh, I could just simply outline the rules, but I do want to kind of go a little bit over the story of what's happened and uh, give you guys a little bit of a plot. So here we go. Our character loves hiking, fishing, hunting, and is overall the outdoors type of person. Of course, this was all before the cataclysm. During the initial outbreak, the military, seeing how fast things were spiraling into chaos, enacted a protocol that they hoped would stop the infected. At 0400, the first bombers flew over the cities of America and unleashed their payload. A secret weapon, designed to infect the infected. The whole goal was to drop bombs that unleashed a chemical, which would travel through the air and latch itself onto the infected, shutting the brain down and terminating them for good. Unfortunately, it didn't pan that way, and as the first bombs made impact, thousands of humans who had survived the initial outbreak of the cataclysm died in the streets, slaughtered by the chemical that was created to save them. Now the cities and towns have become inaccessible, however, there's still hope. The chemical isn't completely impervious. Water has an effect of shutting the chemical down, and during a rainstorm, it's possible to enter a city or town, but only for a limited time. As the water dries up, the chemical becomes more to toxic and once again makes the cities impassable. Our character finds himself out camping during the first outbreak and watched the horror unfold in his hometown from a distance. Everything he knows and everyone he loved is presumed to be dead, but that won't stop him from living. So that's sort of the story that I've put together to explain the rules. I know that it is uh, absolutely littered with plot holes, so please don't uh, attack me. I just wanted to put something together that kind of explained why the rules are the way they are. Now, we're going to be playing out in the wilderness as the title uh, it sort of uh, <laughs> implies. Uh, the point is to survive out in the wilderness. There's really no end goal except for surviving. So some of my scenarios have end goals like find this or do that. This one's not going to have one. The whole point is just to survive. Um, I guess you could consider the end goal to be obviously when we die. That's always the end goal. The series always ends when we die. And hopefully, you know, we want to build a cabin, have uh, a farm going, maybe get a, a vehicle that we can move around in, stuff like that. But essentially, it's all wilderness survival. Now, as you heard in the story, I cannot enter the cities because of the chemical that was unleashed. I can only enter the cities when it is raining. So that means that during a rainstorm, I can make a mad dash to the nearest city and I can enter inside of it and do really quick looting. Now, when the rain ends, that's when I've got to start making my way out of the city. Now, I'm not going to give myself super strict time limits or anything. I'm not going to be like, oh, I have to be out of the city within an hour. You know, I'm going to play by my own rules. Obviously, if I break my own rules, that's just stupid. Why would I do that? The whole series would be stupid if I did that. So just trust me that I'm going to follow the rules. I, I don't have set time limits for everything because I don't want to overcomplicate things or have people point out in the comment section that I missed by like a minute or some crazy stuff. So it just makes sense if I keep everything a little bit more open-ended and I don't complicate everything. Now, we're going to be out there. We're going to be crafting our own tools. It's going to be really important. Foraging for supplies, hunting, and gathering is going to be crucial to our survival. But when it does rain, 
we have to do everything in our power to get inside the city because that's where we're going to find loot that we won't be able to obtain out in the wilderness. Guns and clothing, other types, you know, electronic things. If we want to start trying to get some electronics going, uh, we can find uh, certain other things, but that's going to be crucial to taking advantage of that whenever it happens. Now, if we make it as far as winter, um, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss during that episode, if we make it that far to winter, I'll discuss how the rules are going to play into effect there. I'm not going to worry about discussing that now because that's if we make it that far. Another thing to consider is that there's locations outside the cities. There's labs, there's motels, hotels, there's hospitals, uh, supermarkets, mansions. There's things that don't spawn inside the city. Those things are safe to loot. So it's going to be crucial that I try to take advantage of those whenever I bump into them or find them or going to the end of dead end roads, which usually contain those special locations. Uh, when the military came through and bombed, they obviously didn't bomb every single target on the map. So there's things that I can go to, but anything that is a considered a town or a city or looks like a town or city which is pretty much going to be self-explanatory you know i can't enter obviously i'm going to have discretion of what i think constitutes as a place i can go into or not and you know it, everything in this is going to be kind of up to my discretion of course but i'm going to keep everything within the realm of the rules as best as i can and uh, try not to break those so it can make the series as enjoyable as possible i want to make sure i don't forget anything else here i don't think i have so I really want to get into the character build and the world build that I'm going for. I've already generated uh, or I've already saved a character and we'll go over what that character has. Aside from that, I haven't built a world yet, so we're going to do that together. I mean, I've pretty much built the world, but I haven't done much aside from that. I made some tea, but it tastes more like hot water. I don't think the tea um, took very well. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, that is not the world that is something else all right that was my practice world where i was just practicing the settings i had set i did set some unique settings let's go over them so uh first starting out is i put a bunch of mods on that i just like to play with none of these are really too particular but there is obviously the more survival tools which is going to be i believe crucial for our wilderness survival i did turn acid zombies off and for those of you who watched my silo challenge one you're going to know why uh, I don't want to leave any spoilers, but um, it just so happens to fall around the end of the series. <laughs> acid zombies, I don't like them, especially the acid spitters. I just think they're way overpowered and unbalanced. Um, not that I don't mind a, a challenge. or un I, I know that some zombies are going to be unbalanced and, and powerful, but acid zombies come up way too often to be as powerful as they are. When they spit acid at you, if you don't got anything to protect you, they're dropping health bars like it's nothing. So I just completely remove acid zombies. I don't want to put up with them. Uh, depending on your guys' opinion on that is all up to you. But for me, I'm sick of them. Every playthrough I've done, I'm actually absolutely sick of acid zombies. So we're taking them off. We'll try it without them. Um, vehicle additions, adding more vehicles uh, and vehicle modifications, adding tanks and other vehicles, armored vehicles. I just like to add those because I like to flush the world out. Same with all the gun mods and everything. I like to flush the world out with all sorts of guns. So I've got the uh, the Ice Coons Arsenal as well as Makeshift Items mod, which I think is going to be important because it improves item variants and rebalances existing ones for uh, certain uh, making of items like shovels and everything. Uh, disable NPC needs. That just naturally comes on. And extended realistic guns just makes more overlapping ammo types. So if I end up finding guns, I can grab those. Also, I forgot to mention this is uh, this is the character setup and world setup. You can completely skip this episode if you want. I highly recommend that you don't. But if you want to, um, I guess if you made it this far, then you're committed. <laughs> okay. What else? Uh, I think I thought there was. Nope, that was it. Okay, I remember now. That was it. All right, let's move forward. World options. Now I did change a few things here, not a whole lot, but I want to go over the the things that I did change. So the size of the cities I kept the same. However, I did change the city spacing uh, up to six. So essentially, I don't. I want the cities to be farther spaced apart, and the reason for that is because I want to have plenty of room. Uh, for wilderness and to be able to move around in the wilderness without feeling like I'm trapped around all these cities that, that I have to avoid. So I did uh, increase the city spacing. But yes, the size of the cities will remain the same. 
The uh, other thing that I changed is the monster evolution scaling factor. I turned it up, which will make monsters, if I do this correctly, last time I think I messed it up. If I do this correctly, it should make them evolve slower. Uh, yeah, it says right there, a higher number means slower evolution. Good, so it's right there in the text. So the reason I did that is just because we're in the initial stages of the cataclysm. I know the game always starts in the beginning of the cataclysm, but I wanted to have more of an effect of like, okay, this is the very beginning. We're not really seeing evolved monsters until a lot later. Plus, our character is going to be fairly weak. We'll be at a huge disadvantage to not being able to loot the cities. And so I do want to have just a little bit of a slight upper hand when it comes to monster evolution. Now, the speed and the resilience, I am going to keep the same. But coming on down here, one thing I did change was the construction scaling. I changed it down to 70 so things will build a little bit quicker during in-game time so it'll take less turns. The reason that I did that is because this uh, entire series is going to be literally based on doing construction. We're going to be building a base, doing farming. We might put some traps, build, build a fence around. I don't know. There, there's going to be a lot of building in this game as we try to establish something, something to call home out in the wilderness. And... Uh, since there's going to be so much building, I decided that if I turned it down a little bit, we could build a little bit quicker. Uh, and that would make sense. I don't want to turn it down too much. It's just, it's just a little bit quicker. Now coming on down here, we do have water spawn spawns on, which I always like playing with just creates an added challenge and water spawns have come a long way since they were first implemented. So uh, I originally hated them. I've come to love them. We are going to have static NPCs, random NPCs. I struggled with turning on or off i decided to keep them off and the reason for that is because i think it's gonna be hard for us to obtain a gun and if we bump it to an npc that has a gun and we don't have a gun to fire back we're gonna get shot in the head and die um and npcs tend to be very aggressive so i'm just gonna stay away from that the static npcs i'll keep on just for f a little bit of flavor so we don't feel completely alone but random npcs we're gonna keep them off Mutations by radiation all stays the same and nothing else changed here. All right, so let's move over to finalize world. Uh, this was the part I wanted to wait for you guys because we're going to do our random name like we always do. So we're going to click on the random name thing five times and whatever we get will be it. So one, two, three, four, and five. Yankton. Okay, we are in Yankton. I'm good with that. All right, so Yankton is going to be the world. Or the area that we're in, I guess. We'll call it our, our county, which would make sense because we are in America, as I mentioned in the story. And now we're going to go ahead and load a new game. Now, I do have a preset character here. And as far as I can tell, I can't actually look at the preset character stats, I don't think. Or maybe I can. Let's see. Okay, so here's our um, preset character. You can see right here everything I've pretty much taken, so I don't got to go through it. Uh, for name, we're going to do the same thing, so let's do that real quick. We'll go five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Wow. No, we're not going to... It's Valdo Walsh. You know what? Actually, I will keep that. It's Valdo Walsh. Walsh. <laughs> I didn't want to keep that because I felt like I wouldn't be able to say it too much, but it's Valdo. It's Valdo. Okay. I guess we got a Russian descent or something. Uh, for our stats there, we're going Strength 11, Dexterity 10, Intelligence 8, and Perception 10. Nothing really too crazy or outside the ordinary there. Uh, the only thing I did want to make a note of was Intelligence at 8. The reason I'm doing that is because chances are we won't be doing a whole lot of reading or messing with Bionics or anything like that. Because it, if we do, that's going to be extremely late game for us. Uh, so I didn't see much of a reason to have a high intelligence. I wanted to still have the strength, dexterity, and perception up there uh, for various reasons. Obviously, your health, dexterity for your dodge, perception for seeing traps, which I think is really important, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere where there's lots of minefields. Uh, for traits, now this is pretty important. I tried to stick with traits that felt more outdoorsy or sort of uh, more for a character that would be an outdoor character. So we went with farsighted because unfortunately, even as an outdoors person, we don't have excellent vision. So we will need a pair of glasses at all times to see far away, but we are a lightweight. So alcohol and drugs go straight to our head. We are a little poor of hearing for whatever reason. We just don't hear well. We are trigger happy. Uh, we're an outdoors person. So occasionally we like to flip it to fully automatic and fire as many rounds as we can. We have an addictive personality though. 
So if we start taking drugs or something or drinking lots of alcohol, smoking, we're very quick to get addicted to it and very hard to come off of it. Now for the positive traits I took, I took animal empathy, hence the outdoors character. Animals are less likely to attack us and peaceful animals won't run away. We took night vision. We could just see better at night. Even though I'm blind, I can somehow see really good at night. Night vision is always a, a must for me. It just, I do a lot of my looting and stuff at night. I know we won't be looting towns much, but night vision will at least give us that option that if it's raining, we can do it. Uh, I took pack mule. We can carry 40% more volume. And I took outdoorsman, uh, which means that uh, when it rains, you don't get as much of a negative morale penalty. We like being outdoors and we're going to be outdoors most of the time. So when it does rain, we're going to be moving around a lot, trying to get to a city so we don't want to take a morale penalty for that. We can't just sit inside. That would be ridiculous. It's going to be our only time to loot a city. Now, what's nice is that the scenario obviously is wilderness. So we're going to spawn in the middle of nowhere. And for the profession, I took survivalist. This did cost me three points, but it does give me a cooking of two, fabrication of two, first aid of two, survival of four, swimming of two, and trapping of two. The most important things there being survival and fabrication. First aid, I say, would be the third most important. First aid is pretty important, but survival and fabrication is key to an only wilderness survival because without survival and fabrication, starting at a decent level, we're not even going to be able to craft the basics like a way to start a fire without matches or, you know, I would like to do, I plan on doing a crossbow or a bow build. So that was important. And uh, you know, crafting shovels and makeshift tools. There's a lot of things that we need. So we start with a good set of uh, clothing as well. And I guess I could probably go over real quick so we can see that. Maybe. It's going to be in profession, of course. So there we go. And we can actually look at what we start with as well on top of clothing. So we've got the basic clothing. Uh, things to really uh, pay attention to that shine, uh, shine out or stand out i guess would be the lighter so actually we do have a lighter starting but we won't, won't have it forever hopefully we'll find more uh we've got a flashlight which can be pretty useful you can see we've got the cargo pants we've got enough stuff to keep us pretty pretty warm we're going to start with a pair of reading glasses glasses we've got a whistle which isn't really that useful but we got the scabbard with a survival knife so it's nice to start out with a knife we've got a plastic canteen so Finding water and boiling it is going to be crucial, and we're going to need to find a way to boil it, uh, a can or something. Got a light jacket, a backpack, which is pretty nice, and a long rope. Oh, that hot water is delicious. I don't know why it doesn't taste like tea, but it doesn't. So yeah, that's what we've got there is all that there and all our skills. So we're all set and ready to go. Now, like I said, this was episode zero, so... If you guys stuck out and watched all, uh, congratulations. You're going to know what's going on. For everybody that skipped ahead to episode one, where the game started, they're going to be completely uh, lost in the dark and probably coming back to watch this one because we're going to have no idea what's going on. So good for all of you for hanging out. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and generate the world uh, off camera. And once I get in there, we'll be into the next episode and we'll be ready to go. So I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope you are excited for this one. I know I am extremely thrilled and ready to get this started. So uh, with that being said, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.